This is Optimal Health Daily, episode 76. The Step-by-Step Guide to Emotional Fitness by Laura Ko with goodlifezen.com. Get ready to maximize your potential with Optimal Health Daily, the podcast that brings you the best content in health, fitness, and nutrition five days a week. Your optimal life awaits. Now here's your host, Dr. Neil Malik. Hello, happy Monday, and happy Halloween, everyone. That was my bad Dracula impression. Welcome back to Optimal Health Daily, where I simply read to you for free. I'm Dr. Neil Malik, your narrator of blogs covering fitness, nutrition, stress management, bad impressions, and lots, lots more. It's just like Optimal Living Daily and Optimal Finance Daily, but here we're focused on health and wellness content instead. Now, for Halloween this year, I kind of cheaped out. I went to look at my wardrobe and went, okay, what can I get away with without spending a whole lot of money? So right now, I'm dressed as a mobster from the 20s. Now, I don't know if I can pull this off. My students will probably let me know when I see them later today. But I I think I look kind of like an Indian slash Persian mobster, maybe a Cuban mobster. So I don't know if I'm quite pulling this off correctly or not. The look I was kind of going for was Oscar Isaac's character from the movie Sucker Punch. Don't know if you ever saw that. I don't think a whole lot of people did, to be honest. But that's kind of the look I was going for, minus the pencil-thin mustache. So if you could see me right now, you'd probably laugh. Anyways, that's all I have for today's intro. So let's hear the post and start optimizing your life. The Step-by-Step Guide to Emotional Fitness by Laura Ko with goodlifezen.com. Our culture is emotionally out of whack. We live in a maze of thoughts, media, culture, people, noise, words, screens, air, and confusion. Through our lives, we're expected to move through these experiences and derive meaning from them. We're supposed to figure out our lives. We're supposed to have it all together. But we don't. We fail. We're not perfect people. We weren't born with the ability to do things right on the first try. And we all, regardless of who we are, come to this life with our own set of problems and issues. It's just that some of the problems we carry are mental, they're emotional, and they're ruining our lives. More people with emotional issues are seeking treatment than ever before. We live in a world where everyone is just as lost, as scared, and as confused as you are, but no one's talking about it. In a word, we are emotionally unfit. So how do we fix this? The first step toward gaining emotional fitness. It doesn't seem acceptable to say, I don't feel like I'm enough, or I don't feel emotionally together. It doesn't feel acceptable to tell regular friends that you feel shame, fear, or emotional stagnation. But the truth is that the first step to solving your emotional issues is taking responsibility for them. It's addressing that, hey, this is real, and hey, this needs to be fixed. Because if you think the strongest people on the planet are people without problems, guess what? You're dead wrong. Because from the famous to the unknown, the strongest people on this planet are people whose lives are defined by difficulty. So what do you do now? Address it. Commit to working on your emotional fitness. And then proceed. The underlying catalyst of all emotional problems. There's one thing that determines whether or not you are emotionally healthy. What is it? Your thoughts. Any emotional health book that tells you not to watch your thoughts or even address them is lying to you. So what do you do? First, do a self-diagnosis. One, what are your thoughts like? Two, what are the things you say to yourself? And three, when you do something, what goes on in your head? The root of solving your emotional problems is solving the issue of your reactions to everyday life because life packs a punch. What matters is how you mentally handle those punches. How you handle the punches is how you handle your life. And these reactions all start as thoughts, whether immediate or drawn out. So look at them, play with them, and understand they can be changed. Your brain is a neural patterned network. Even if you're used to telling yourself you are not good enough, the brain has the neuroplasticity for you to actually go in, say something different, and create a positive thought loop. All it takes is work. The weird way that routines can revolutionize your life. You are what you repeatedly do. 
It's your job to set routines in place that produce a result in your life. You wanna be clean? You have to carve out 10 minutes to showering. You wanna be healthy? You have to carve out another 45 to working out. But what if we wanna be emotionally fit? You have to carve out time for the routines that will help your specific issues. Ask yourself, do you have doubts holding you back? Take 10 minutes a day to write down those thoughts, the specific sentences that you're telling yourself, then formulate a rebuttal and logically figure out why those doubts are wrong. Now memorize the rebuttal, and when the doubt comes up, mentally bring back the logical argument against it. Do you feel unhappy with what you have? Take 10 minutes a day to write down what you're grateful for in the morning and start the day off right. Do you have a dream you want to go after? Write it down. Figure out all the barriers, including yourself, that are holding you back and think about how you can get past them. Is your mind unfocused and dizzy with negative thought loops? Meditate every day right after you wake up and focus on something you're grateful for. Action means routines, and routines keep you emotionally on point. As Charles Duhigg, author of The Power of Habit, says, quote, Change might not be fast, and it isn't always easy, but with time and effort, almost any habit can be reshaped. The secret to figuring out the answers. Many of the solutions to our problems are simple, but alas, simple doesn't mean easy. When people say getting healthy is as easy as exercising 45 minutes, yet you don't have the motivation to work out, they're missing the point. The problem isn't, I don't know how to get healthy, it's, I don't know how to motivate myself to get healthy, which is a different problem you need to solve. Fix the right problems, fix your life. Commit to reading about these issues and commit to figuring out the answers. So what's the way forward? My entire life, from my teens into adulthood, I was emotionally screwed up. I started a multi-million dollar company, but sold it in a heartbeat to be with my son. I partied my way through high school and sat confused in a desk chair in college as I tried to start a career in writing that didn't take off. Life is tough, but the great thing about life is that people smarter than you had the same problems you had. Everyone on this planet has dealt with getting fat, feeling unhappy, losing a loved one, not feeling enough, not feeling cool, not feeling part of the group, not feeling happy with their friends, not feeling loved, not feeling funny enough, not feeling stable enough, you name it. But the smartest people wrote it down and got after it. The framework to attack any emotional problem is simple. One, accept that you need to work on your emotional health. Two, analyze your thoughts and ask questions about them. Three, create routines every day where you work on your specific emotional battle. Four, figure out what the real problems are and fix them. And five, read about research and apply the best advice. No one is saying it's easy, but is it worthwhile? Well, if we want to solve the cultural and systemic problems of our times, like a lack of emotional fitness, we have no other choice. You just listened to the post titled The Step-by-Step Guide to Emotional Fitness by Laura Co. with goodlifezen.com. And by the way, that was a guest author on goodlifezen.com. I really like that Laura emphasized writing everything down. They've actually studied this and they found that those that write down their emotions, their goals, whatever it is, somehow the brain registers it differently and those people tend to be more successful. And somehow, they're still trying to figure this out, the brain responds differently to actually writing things out versus typing or just saying things aloud. So I encourage you, whenever you can, actually write things down on paper. And if you're really into improving your emotional fitness, I highly recommend two resources. One, take 10 minutes and watch Dr. Sean Acor's talk on happiness. You can find it on YouTube. It's a TEDx talk. And two, read The Happiness Project by Gretchen Rubin. Now you may have noticed I didn't share an inspirational quote at the top of the show. That's because Laura included some great ones. And so I'm gonna repeat one of my favorite ones that I actually already mentioned when I was reading you the post. Change might not be fast, and it isn't always easy, but with time and effort, almost any habit can be reshaped. Now, if you've been listening to this podcast for a while, you'll know that we do book giveaways every month to random people on our mailing list, and we do it on the first of the month, which is tomorrow. So if you wanna be entered into the raffle, 
you need to be part of our mailing list by tonight. You can join really quickly right now by texting the word BATMAN to the number 44222. Or you can enter your email address at our site, oldpodcast.com. Either way works just fine and you'll be entered into the drawing at midnight tonight and every month as long as you're on the mailing list. That's it for today. Have a safe and happy Halloween. Thank you so much for listening. It's okay to eat candy. I give you permission. Just don't go overboard. Tomorrow, we'll be hearing a post from Ben Greenfield on getting a flat stomach. Perfect after eating all that Halloween candy. So stay tuned for that, where your optimal life awaits. Hello, Life Optimizer. This is Justin Mollick, creator and producer of this show and Optimal Living Daily, the brother podcast of this one. Literally, I'm Dr. Neil's brother. If you like the format of this show, you'll love Optimal Living Daily too, where I also read to you from blogs, but cover other topics like personal development, finance, and minimalism from bloggers like Derek Sivers, The Minimalists, Zen Habits, and many more. So for more amazing content read to you for free, come subscribe to Optimal Living Daily too, and together we'll optimize your life. You've been listening to Optimal Health Daily. Be sure to hit the subscribe button to stay up to date on each new episode and head to oldpodcast.com That's oldpodcast.com for a free gift, as well as more actionable tips and resources to help you maximize your potential. Thanks for joining us, and remember, your optimal life awaits.